Hello and welcome back to Mega Reacts. So today we're going to be reacting to Blacklist Season 2, Episode 13. Last episode we had this crazy cult and they were basically all killed by the savage children they abandoned in the forest due to <laughs> the, the rules of the cult to have more than one wife. So they had to get rid of some of the boys and the boys that survived this culling of the herd basically came savage af and they killed basically the rest of the cult started blowing up vans with bombs in it they were kind of insane kind of insane this this uh cult also had a bunch of shipping containers that uh, belonged to different criminals and things of that nature so of course red was interested in what was going on by the end of it though uh the evil cult children most of them I don't think most of them were killed. I think a few of them were killed, especially uh, this one real asshole one. But for the most part, I think the kids will be all right. And Red got something out of a car that might've been the same car JFK was shot in. Not 100% on that, but he uh, got something out of it. He was able to make a call and kind of where we left off. Who was on the other line? What, what information can he get? This was the, this was, uh, this number is tied to the, the member of the Illuminati, basically, who was, who was killed. So yeah, just kind of got to see where we go from here. There's still so much up in the air right now in season two. The biggest thing is Lizzie and the murder she covered up and how that is slowly but surely coming to bite her in the ass. We also had a great moment where Cooper was uh, through his contacts able to get into a trial he was willing to turn it down though if he took someone else's spot but he did not they just added an extra spot for him perks of uh having friends in high places but let's just hop right into this episode but before we do come on this journey with me like comment share subscribe patreon link in the description below this is mega let's get into it our suspect is patient calm he likely spends hours scouting the prey. He's only interested in big men, the ones who are hard to take down, like the big bucks in the wild. Now you're okay. looking for That's weird. an incredibly smart offender. When he does finally make his move, it happens fast. Striking in a blitz-style attack most never see coming. A crossbow? That's not a manly weapon. make it over 100 feet before Come on. He guts them, removing the organs with surgical precision, but then leaving them in a pile. But these aren't sex crimes. Which Hannibal doesn't waste his organs. It is my belief that the deer hunter is in fact a the very slight, hunter. rather weak man. Yes, blue shirt. They say he takes a souvenir. The deer it's hunter a is a great it's movie, a by final the way. Act of domination. He carves out the liver and takes a single ceremonial bite. Oh, oh, that's a little bit of cannibalism there. Kind of gross. We need to talk about the fulcrum. I told you I don't know anything about it. Elizabeth, one of the reasons I'm still alive is due to my love of reading. Whether it be words on a page or people that reveal the author's thoughts, emotions, imagination, or whether it be people in conversation to ignore what they say and instead read their expression. This brute they call the deer hunter isn't a buck at all, but instead a delicate doe. A woman. I disagree with you. Perhaps that would explain the crossbow. Prey. Men tend to kill in close proximity. You haven't found your man because he's a woman. Uh, Agent Keen, uh, the MD called. He just finished his autopsy on the latest picture. That is solid, solid conjecture. Is it conjecture? Assumption? I used to have a teeming mane just like that. Oh. <laughs> uh, Look you. upon my head and see your future. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I feel you, bro. This conversation is over. You are, you are bone girl. You're gonna have to go to Red for help, and in return, the fulcrum, his price. 
He'd help you for free, let's be honest. Samuel Leko will be transferred tomorrow afternoon. That's not gonna work. Look, you asked to talk to the guy. This is the window. He leaves the V Street station between two and four. It is what it is. Cinnamon nut crumble? Brown sugar pecan. <laughs> Lucinda knows how you love her coffee cake. <laughs> oh, I do. Mm. <laughs> you well, Edgar, and tell Lucinda yeah. if she ever leaves you. He's I'd so likable. He needs to reschedule. No, no, that's not how it works. I told him to come alone. I gave very specific instructions. Mr. Reddington's a man of his word. If it were possible, he would be here. Wherever he is, whatever the hell he's doing, I hope it's important. He chooses the safety of Elizabeth Keene over his own safety, over the mystery, over the information. I mean, it says it all. Seconds. <laughs> Here we go. This is going to be one hell of a conversation. How long has Isaac been on the list now? Who's, who is Isaac? How do you know about my brother? Brother. Six months. I can get him a heart two. today. How long is he going to have to wait? I can get your brother a heart within the week. Best surgeons. Best post-op care. And it won't cost you a dime. Why would you do that for me? I'm not doing it for you. Because you're going to do something for me. We found the link, <laughs> or at least what could be. You're going to say you made it all we up? You're going to take the fall? We started over with the most basic question. <laughs> we know each other. Uh, right, but that theory uh, died quickly. There are seven he's so good. From different... You're talking about oh, serial that's, murders. That's her. The I see her. Henning. Yep, right there. Had to, had to eavesdrop, didn't you? Man, they uglied her up too. She's not usually that bad looking. At least I don't remember her being. She was I in. Uh, I'm overreacting, right? So I married an axe murderer, maybe? I don't know if she talked with the FBI. But. Damn, crazy cat lady. She'd expose everyone. And I don't care about myself. Alright, alright. This is completely random. Completely random. But I learned, watching some other YouTube channel, Roanoke Gaming, I think, that, you know, there is a, there's a parasite that gets into rats and it makes them not be afraid of cats. So the cats eat them and the parasite can reproduce in the cat and get in the cat poop. And that's how it kind of procreates its life cycle. But, but. It can also get into people and apparently apparently it can make people like the smell of cat urine and it is speculated that crazy cat ladies are just infested with this parasite or i think it's a parasite i don't i don't think it's a bacteria it could be a virus or a bacteria i don't quite remember every little detail but i do remember that they develop a fondness for the smell of cat urine. So it makes them want to have more cats and that's why you can walk into their house and you can't breathe and they think it smells fine. Just a weird little, little thing out there. Check out Roanoke Gaming. He does these great videos on kind of movie viruses and movie things that happen, but he breaks them down in a very scientific way. He himself was a scientists in some form or fashion he worked in labs and all that but yeah it's a fantastic channel i recommend it but seeing her with all those damn crazy cat them crazy cats i think she might be infected check your corners check your corners didn't check your corners whoa how the hell did you drag a person? Solid headbutt. Probably wouldn't have worked on me. <laughs> I'm too fat. <laughs> yes. My years of cultivating mass would have paid off. Mary and her anybody else, anybody but them. 
I understand. Maybe a jury will. That's what I said. To the deer hunter, the real one. He was my husband. You're, oh! My God. That is awesome. My father. Bastard. Pushing him, pushing him, picking on him, cutting him down. He didn't want to face what he was, so he overcompensated. I fended him off with a knife before, but that, I never held the bow before I knew it. The arrow went straight through his heart. And I thought about calling the police, turning myself in, and then I realized. A little therapy session. You. you are nuts. Just to, just to you see are them nuts. Change, to hear them whimper. And, and, but, You're like, get you been through some shit. But all the things after, you know, the cutting, the mess, I hated it. It's not healthy. I didn't, I didn't have a choice. Even from beyond the grave, he still pulls the strings. Okay. Okay. Please just don't do stab me do. with that dirty ass knife. Can you please, please just do me one favor? Turn around. Shut the hell up and get it over with. <laughs> You think I'm buying this whole justice for victims crap? Well, it's true. <laughs> You're just like your husband. I'm nothing like my husband. You're exactly like him, like all the sick psychopathic animals we lock up. Now you haven't heard a word that I've been saying. Get close. Yeah. Choke this bitch out. Lock me with painter's tape. Your mistake. Are you just like your husband, Keith, Lizzie? Keith, stop. Parallel. Keith, no. See, <laughs> your husband. How, oh, that's how you're different, though. See, so you didn't kill. You're not really a killer. You're nothing like Tom. I like how they set that up. That was that was nice. Please tell the U.S. Attorney exactly what you told me about. Agent Elizabeth Keene's involvement in the murder of DC Harbor Master Eugene Ames. I don't remember. You confessed that Agent Keene was present, the Harbor Master was killed, and that she deliberately covered up his death. That's what you want me to say. That's not how it was. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. uh, Mr. Reddy, I said I should call. Uh, quit, playing, call quit, quit playing with your hair. <laughs> the hairline? Guys don't get it. Most women don't care if men go bald. No. Did you think I... You're sexy is, no matter what. I'm not is that, bald. Is that true? I have a high hairline. Wait, what? Did I have a high hairline. Yeah. Both of my brothers are bald. Just don't get fat. I'm on borrowed time. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm fat and bald. Lord, help me. You were right about the deer hunter. He was a man. And a woman. We were both half right. Together we were right. I have the fulcrum. Tell me what it is and I'll tell you where to find it. <laughs> I've already told you what I can. To elaborate would place you in grave danger. I don't need your protection. Oh, I think yes, you do. Yes, you do. If it weren't for me, you would have been indicted today. As it is, you needn't worry about the harbor master anymore. What did you do? Nobody was hurt, if that's what you're concerned about. In fact, a young man's life was saved. I don't want to hear anymore. I'm leaving. I Can't you I be grateful no you don't want me to for a second? Before. That is. Because you're afraid. That he'll leave. Once you give it to me, it'll be of no further use to me. And or die. Or see me again. Yeah, you're afraid he'll abandon you. Is that really it? If you really want him gone, give him the fulcrum. See what happens. I don't think he'd leave. Great episode. Great episode. I'll be right back with you. That was Blacklist Season 2, Episode 13. Fantastic episode. We had the deer hunter, a serial killer, turned out to be a man who was murdered by his wife. The wife took over the mantle of deer hunter to kill abusive men. 
that was pretty cool. Uh, she was taking a bite of their liver. That's gross, but you know, she's a psycho who loves cats and might be uh, infected with, with whatever parasite or bacteria or virus it is that makes you like cat urine. It's a crazy world we live in, folks. It's crazy. We had Lizzie dead to rights, going to prison, charges filed, she was done. Red came through like always, saved a boy's life, saved her life, and she is not grateful in the slightest. I mean, some gratitude would be nice. Some gratitude would be nice. Red has covered up your your messes for a while now. All right, and you act like it's a burden to have this wonderfully smart and charismatic and beautiful guardian angel who looks after you and takes care of you. I'd love just a little bit of a little bit of fucking gratitude, Lizzie. Okay, just a little bit would be nice. Would be nice. Red is nicer than I am. I would have said something like that. A little bit of gratitude, please, please, just a little. And she uh, she showed him none. She did say she had the fulcrum and he called her out. He called her out. You will not give it to me because you are afraid I will leave. It's secretly you love me here because once again, I'm cleaning up your messes all the time. I'm your guardian angel. I get you into the best places, the best food. You get to fly in my private jet, G5. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. It was a great episode though. Uh, the fulcrum is really coming into play here. The guy that Red was trying to get a hold of, he might have been murdered. He might have set that whole thing up. Not really sure, but you know what? I wanna find out and you wanna find out as well. Continue to come on this journey with me. Like, comment, share, subscribe, Patreon link in the description below. This is Mega signing off.